Hey guys, welcome to another quickie. Some of you guys might actually not know that inside the spline editor, you can not only modify animation keys, but also tools that have curve editors, such as the hue curve, color curve, or even the hotspot. Now let's talk about the hue curves. Hue curves is a very powerful tool because you can do very precise adjustments in the hue, saturation, luminance, the red, green, blue channel, or you can even use suppression. Now, if you select one of these tools and you go into the spline editor, you can see that all of the curves that you have available here are actually also available in the spline editor, with the difference that you have a lot of space here. On the left side window here, you have all your curves, and by clicking on the main one, you can either freeze all curves or hide them all. So it's very easy to isolate one of the curves that you want to modify. For example, let's say we want to modify the hue curves. To not accidentally touch all the other curves, you can simply freeze all of them and then just click twice in order to make the hue curve available. Now you can go in and adjust the curve as you like. Now, there's one cool feature that the hue curve tool has and uh, this is the pick color button that you see here. This pick color button allows you to pick a color from your image and uh, just hover over your image and once you release, you can see that uh, the tool created a triangle or a point here. It also appears here. Now this triangle, this point is actually locked horizontally. You can only modify the value of it but you cannot go left and right. To unlock this point, you can simply right click here on the triangle and choose lock pick points. Now for some reason, this lock pick point is not available here. So just go here and unlock it. And now you can just move it freely. One thing you wanna be aware of. Now if you check something here, these checkbox are not connected to these checkboxes here. So it means if I uncheck this hue and activate the saturation, it won't activate it here. So just be careful that you choose the right channel here. Let's move to the color curve tool. Now the color curve tool, basically it's all the same. You ha also have the pick color button, but other than that, it's basically all the same. You can do your fine adjustments inside of the spline editor. It gets more interesting with the uh, lens flare or the hotspot tool. So first, when you load up the hotspot, you would get something like this here. Select the hotspot and go into the spline view. So now here in the left window, you can see that you have actually color and radial, those two tabs here, you have them combined in this window. So you can access all the curves in just one window. For now, let's just deactivate all and activate the radial. Now a cool feature you can use when you want to create some random stuff is the click append button here. What this button allows you is to click anywhere inside this window and it will create a point. So it's basically like a draw function. Now if we go over and activate radial and modify this and change the radial angle and then let's go over to the length and do the same here. Just very randomly just do anything here. So using this uh, curves here, you can create some interesting elements that you can use for motion graphics or whatsoever. I've created a few presets here. Let's just go through them. I wanna show you now how you can use such an element to create something interesting with it. First, let's create a bump map. Create bump map. Connect it, crank it up a bit, use a 16-bit float. 
now we get some sort of shading here. And we're gonna convert this using our color space tool. And this makes technically no sense, um, but it gives you some results that you might find interesting. And by modifying them, you can get some pretty cool looking things out of it. For now, let's just go with this one. Append a merge, hook this into the background and now overlay this one using a overlay, for example, and you get something like this. Okay, now let's add a filter. Connect branch out from color space and set the filter to Sobel. Append a mask and set the channel to red. Now we use this mask to control a color correction node. Hook this in into the mask slot. And let's crank up the gain. Something like this. So you the mask. You can always play around with the with these values to get more details out of it. Okay, next let's grab a copy of our background, paste it in here, and let's add a merge. And let's overlay our background here. Let's say, let's try uh, something like this, maybe. Okay, and now let's do something fancy. Add a displace. A fast noise. Hook this in. Let's view the noise here. Now let's change the type to discontinuous and the scale. Let's put this like, let's add some more detail and crank up the displacement a little bit, maybe something like this. Now we want to protect the inner circle because uh, um, I like it. So yes, let's use a mask, a simple ellipse, hook it in and make the size like inverted and make the size, adjust the size so it matches our ring here. So we can choose something like this. Yeah, I can create some fancy animation later on. <laughs> okay, well, next let's create a bump map again. Branch out here. Like this. And append a Boolean tool. So what we want to do now is we want to remove the color. We set it to black. And in the auxiliary channels, enable. And for the X, Y, Z normal channels, we put uh, we shift the red from the background, the green, and the blue to the corresponding channels here. Now, if you take a look inside the channels, you can see that we have embedded our normals now. Okay, and we can use this now to take advantage of the shader tool, switch back to the color and let's find an interesting light position here. And let's merge this on top of our image using maybe alpha. And let's do some adjustments here. For example, what about a soft glow, which is not so soft. Just ever so slightly. And pan the color correction tool and let's bring the gain a bit down. 
And additionally, you can just blur it a little bit. Not too much. And once in a while, you want to check whether you have black uh, pixels or not. You can do that using the 3D histogram, for example. Okay, here down there, it looks fine. Of course, we have value, values that go over one, but that's totally cool. Just make sure that there's no pixel outside here. If there's a pixel, you might want to clip them by using a brightness contrast. Let's turn this off again. So what we can do now is, for example, we can create another filter. Leave it at relief. Branch out. And just add another one. Create something like this. And let's grab a copy here of the merge. Shift in between it. And set it to uh, hue. Put the gain to one for now. Hook it in. And let's view it. And hue it is. So, and now if we bring this down, we can create something like this. And as you can see, now we get those black pixels. You can simply clamp them by adding a BC. Oops. Watch closely now what happens to the black pixels as, as soon as we hit clip black and clip whites. Actually, in this case, it was the whites that caused the problem. So, I'd like to give it a, this little texture, so, but I don't want to make it too strong. So, just slightly. And then like this, maybe. Next, add a color correction. View it. And let's bring the brightness down. Something like this. And maybe change the color a little bit. Something like this. Okay, now let's add some fancy stuff. For that, we create a text node. And we set the font type to Wingdings. And let's type, uh, let's try to find some, yeah, dots. Just get some dots here. Actually, um, we want to make this square. And a paint. Let's let's give it some shading here. I don't know if I need it now or for now. Just let's do it. Let's create a gradient and let's choose something like this and maybe this one. And in the second slot, I activated a, the red outline preset. And for this one, I also choose gradient type. And uh, this time I choose brighter one. Oh yeah, let's leave it like this for now. And the next thing is we do is uh, let's add a coordinate space tool and set it to polar to rectangular. Now we get this circular distortion here and we want to adjust it so that it... Yeah, just add another L and it looks a little better. And let's set the size to one. Yeah, maybe something like this. You could always play around with the transform. For example, uh, under characters, you could try the character spacing and just adjust the space a little bit so it um, so we get the more unique distribution here okay cool so next we want to merge this over a background 
which has the composition resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. So we merge this over and let's use a transform to scale this down. Yeah, let's actually merge this over so we see exactly where the, where it is. Let's use uh, overlay for now. And let's put this right here. Here in this in this background, let's just uh, remove the let's put the alpha to zero, and let's put this back to normal. Now I will create mm, a copy. Branch is out here. Use another merge and merge these two on top. But I'm gonna scale this a bit down, something like. Maybe like this. So now let's use a mask. So now where can we go from here? We could uh, use a Boolean tool. Hook this in. Hook this into the mask and choose clear. Now we cut it holes into this, but I actually want to invert it. So you can always go into this nuclear or radiation tab here and choose apply mask inverted. Recommend you to don't use this one, but use a mask instead because sometimes you forget that you actually changed it in here. So you might be surprised why the mask is not working probably. So unless you know exactly what you're doing, you better use a mask. So you know exactly what is here. So ch choose this mask and uh, invert it. Now let's append a shadow. View it. Well, down. And set the type to shadow only. Merge it on top. Let's adjust the mask here. Okay, now let's create something. Uh, yeah, let's create another bump here. So I really don't know where I'm going here. I'm just uh, improvising to show you what is actually so cool about nodal compositing. Okay, so let's create a bump map out of this mask. Something like this. And now let's uh, append a color correction node. Now in the color correction node, now if we would reduce the gain of the red, for example, we get something like this. Okay. So, uh, Let's add, or let's copy the boolean, the cutout boolean from here to over here. Branch the mask in, and we have this. Now let's add a, another color correction tool, and let's see where we're going with this. Maybe we just color it. Crank the game maybe up, and add a soft glow. Bang. <laughs> Well, let's just merge this over. Using a add. Actually, I don't like the direction here. So now it looks like it comes out because I, I use this one. So if I use the inverted one, we'll get uh, a look that it goes inside. And we can always change the position here by adjusting the scale, but of course we have to adjust the scale of the other transform as well. Okay, let's see where we go next. Let's add a 
mask. Maybe from here. Another one. Let's invert this. And now we can move the center of one mask and offset it. So we get some sort of uh, highlights. And then we can use a color curve tool again and use this as a mask. to brighten up the edges, something like this. Let's copy this text over here. So we have the same shading and let's change to web dings. And let's type some random stuff in here from something like this. Let's just go nuts here and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's crank up the scale. So it's, it covers the whole thing here. And now if we would add like a, like, let's say dent. And we put the size like very high. Get something fancy like this. Now let's add a merge and let's overlay this for now. Let's see how it looks. Create another edge detection here. So bell. Another merge. And let's just uh, add this on top. And in between a color correction node to darken this a little bit. So if you find this palm tree here disturbing, then you can always go back and just type some other stuff in here. For now, I just like the this, this shape here. So let's keep it for now. Let's create a copy and also copy the dent. Now we can always go in and offset the center point a little bit. Or just change the size. And let's copy the text and the dent one more time. Another merge. This time we're gonna make the text smaller. And add a few more lines. Blah, 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 blah. And maybe try the wings dings. And after the dent, we get something like this. We could change to kaleidoscope or try different dance here. Maybe the kaleidoscope is interesting. Yeah, but now we can see the hand. So we need to just, we need to distort this a little bit more. Maybe let's change also the type to a Dutch. So, and uh, maybe finally add another color correction and let's use a ellipse mask. And uh, go up here.
Let's crank up the rate maybe a little bit. Yep. So this. Okay, guys, now I think it's uh, time for me to stop talking and I will go on and uh, change a few things. You can keep watching and uh, yeah, don't forget to download the comp file and try a few things on your own. Uh, experiment is the best way to learn. So yeah, yeah, so I hope I see you soon. If you have any questions, uh, hook me up on Facebook. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. See ya.